Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I've made a video for my channel, um, so I guess we're overdue. But anyways, today uh, I'm going to be showing you the methanol injection kit that I put on my new to me 2015 F250 6.7 liter Super, du super Duty. Um, <clears throat> so obviously diesel truck, uh, diesels love methanol injection. Uh, I went with a kind of a mix match of parts. Um, the kit I wanted was the mile per gallon max, which is good for miles per gallon as well as horsepower. Um, but I did not want to pay the $850 price tag. I just didn't have the money. Uh, it also came with the seven gallon tank. Um, I felt it would be easier to mount the 10 gallon tank, which was obviously if I bought that, that 850 kit and then bought the other tank. At this point now I'm over a thousand dollars invested in the kit and I got a seven, seven gallon tank laying around that I didn't need. So. I reached out to a buddy of mine who had the controller, which is like $340 brand new. He sold it to me 150 bucks. Um, so that saved me some money. Um, he had one nozzle holder, so I bought a second nozzle holder because this kit has two nozzles, um, or at least it's designed to run two nozzles, a mile per gallon nozzle, and then your, your power nozzle. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second, but that's basically what I'll be talking about. The, uh, it runs on a progressive controller. I currently have it set to come on at nine pounds of boost. Uh, that would be 25% duty cycle of the pump. And then 100% duty cycle at 22 pounds of boost. Simultaneously at 22 pounds of boost, the power nozzle solenoid will open and it will begin spraying through the second nozzle. Obviously at that point, the pump is still running 100% duty cycle, but instead of spraying my mile per gallon nozzle only, which is 440, 440 milliliters per minute, it sprays both nozzles. The big nozzle is a 540, so combined you're talking about just over a, a thousand uh, milliliters per minute, uh, which on a 6.7 liter motor running 22 plus pounds of boost, that's really not that much methanol considering on my EcoBoost, uh, which was 3.5 liters and ran 18 pounds of boost, I ran a, a single thousand milliliter nozzle. So realistically, I'm not spraying hardly anything on the diesel, uh, but because of the way they recommend you set the nozzles to turn on, you spray more often, but it's typically just a little nozzle that's, that's giving you a little squirt here and there. Um, but anyways, so here's the truck. First time having it on the channel. Um, I've had it for a couple months now. Uh, I've gone on one, one road trip with it, runs great. Very happy with it, currently running the stock tune, although I do have uh, a tuner for it, which you'll see when we get inside the truck. Uh, I don't have any tunes loaded in. The uh, the stock tune's actually quite impressive. Um, with the exception of the dead pedal that diesels are known for. But that's what this little guy took care of. I think it was like 120 or 140 bucks on eBay. And you can adjust how sensitive you want the, the throttle to be. Um, which is nice. Because it actually drives like a sports car if you turn it way up. It actually drives too aggressively if you turn it up. Um, so I have it set pretty low compared to what that thing's capable of but that's not what we're talking about oops got slammed by the door so keys on normally this would turn on with the key but uh snow recommends a uh, toggle switch so oops let me turn the music off before i get some kind of copyright thing um, if i leave the switch on it'll come on with the uh the vehicle every time I did have it turned off just for some testing, and as you saw, I just flipped it back on. Otherwise, it's on a relay, so anytime the keys turn on, it comes on. But anyways, um, I don't have the pyrometer installed, although it can read um, your, your exhaust gas temperature. And in tow mode, it actually looks for um, EGTs and boost pressure to control how much methanol sprays, whereas in right now, it's in mile per gallon slash horsepower mode which only looks at boost pressure. But I like that it gives you, uh, on this screen, I can see boost, I can see EGTs, and I can see um, the percentage of injection. So that's pretty nice, at least in my mind, I like that. Uh, but anyways, that's the controller. Wiring's all back here, there's a relay. Um, that way I'm pulling power straight off the battery. It does have an inline fuse. The instructions call for a 20 amp fuse, so it clearly does not draw much electricity if 20 amps is the fuse that they recommend. But I still installed the relay just to make it easier. I didn't want to have to pull any extra current from any of the OEM wires and things. So like I said, I wanted the bigger tank, even though it's way overkill and I'll never need it. Uh, but here's the 10 gallon tank. 
runs through this little area right here. I made that hole way overkill because I had a different plan in mind uh, as far as rooting that uh, the methanol line. And then uh, when the plans changed, I had to drill a second hole and that's why it looks like that. But actually I should probably put a little squirt of paint on there so it doesn't rust, but living in the desert, we don't get much rust on things. Um, the tank's quite large, 10 gallons. At least that's what it's rated to. It's currently only full of window washer fluid combined with uh, some heat spray or heat, you know what I'm talking about, the yellow bottle stuff. Anybody who does methanol knows what I'm talking about. Um, I mounted the pump, if we can get a view of it. Tucked up here, uh, that black thing just to the left of the pump is uh, an inline filter. It actually has a smaller micron screen than uh, the nozzles. So technically anything that makes it through that will make it through the nozzle without plugging up or having any problems. Um, I do have, you know, obviously the shield and the mud flap. So I'm not worried about the pump getting messed up from rocks or dirt or anything like that. And um, my only other concern would be backing into a lake or down a boat ramp if, uh, you know, I'm sure the pump can handle it, but you gotta keep in mind too, it's somewhere in this neighborhood which is probably a good two feet off the ground. Um, I don't intend on getting any boats or towing any boats that are so big that I have to have the back of my truck submerged in water. So I'm not worried about submerging that pump at all. Uh, plus it's a DC motor. DC motors take moisture a lot better than AC. All right, so this is stuff that's more interesting. Uh, this is obviously aftermarket uh, cold slide pipe because the OEM pipe is known for blowing off. Uh, so this has nothing to do with the kit. It's just uh, preventative maintenance because I don't want this coupler to explode like the factory tends to. But it worked out great because it's a nice thick piece of aluminum that was easy to drill into. Um, it, it's, it, it worked out perfect. Normally there'd be a big piece of plastic right here so you could actually drill and tap into that. Um, obviously plastic's easy to drill and tap but so is aluminum if you have the correct tools, which is basically just a decent quality drill and a decent quality tap. So anyways, this is the, uh, the nozzle that runs all, pretty much all the time. Not all the time, I, I take that back. Anytime I, I, I make nine pounds of boost, this won't start spraying, starting at a 25% duty cycle, and obviously it increases all the way up to 100% with the pump. Um, this is the boost reference that tells the controller exactly how much boost is in this pipe. And if we come around to the other side, uh, it's kind of buried back there, but that little guy right there is the uh, uh, my, my power nozzle. So it's connected to this solenoid. So anytime that solenoid open, it feeds methanol to the uh, power no nozzle, which is the big one, the 540, as opposed to the 440. And the lines run here. This is an inline check valve, which makes sure that the motor can't siphon anything out of the tank, although diesels don't really pull a ton of vacuum at idle. I mean, maybe one inch or so, and as soon as you barely lay your foot on the gas to start moving, you're immediately pulling or going into boost, or at least neutralizing so that you're not pulling a vacuum whatsoever. So a little overkill possibly, uh, but preventative maintenance or preventative measure, however you want to look at it. Uh, it was only 25 bucks or something like that, so gladly spent the money on that. Um, like I said, I pieced the kit, kit together. So this is actually a snow performance nozzle holder. This one over here is a devil's own. Um, this came with the, uh, the tank. I think I paid like 160 bucks for the tank. Um, so it was nice to get that nozzle, which is, a, you know, normally 50 bucks by itself. So that, I feel like that was a good savings on money. I didn't have to buy the $850 kit and then not use the, the expensive $140 tank that came with it. I think it's like $120 or $140 if you buy the tank alone. Um, inline fuse that I just had laying around. It's only a 20 amp, that's all it requires. I think the pump is rated to like six amps and this solenoid can't be more than one and a half amps. So it's really not pulling jack for vacuum. I can tell you after having this kit on here for only a couple of weeks, night and day difference when the methanol is spraying and when it's not spraying. And I'm not talking about wide open throttle, I'm just talking about driving around like a normal person. Um, you completely feel the difference, like getting on the freeway, accelerating to pass somebody, even at part throttle, there's a huge difference between when the methanol sprays and when it doesn't spray. And currently have it turned off um, due to a issue I don't wanna get into. I had to replace the DPF, 
this was before the methanol, has nothing to do with the methanol. Um, but uh, I have a brand new DPF. The truck has not gone through a regen yet uh, since the new DPF has been installed. So I'm just leaving the methanol kit off since I know it's coming quick. The DPF says it's 85% full. So I'm just leaving it alone. Uh, I'm waiting for that to happen. Once it does, I'll put the kit back on. Um, this is not supposed to affect the DPF or the regen process whatsoever. Um, but I'm leaving it off just to make sure everything goes smooth the first time. Um, but anyways, highly recommend putting methanol on your diesel. Diesels seem to really love methanol. Um, it typically creates pressure after top dead center. So it actually is safer than trying to pump a bunch of diesel and boost into it. Um, plus you get the benefits of, if you're like me, and you have all this EGR horse crap still installed, thank you EPA. Um, this basically is pumping dirty exhaust fumes back into the intake uh, by spraying methanol it's cleaning all of that crap out as well as the back of my intake valves steam cleaning the pistons all that good stuff it's a win-win as far as that's concerned more power better miles per gallon cleaning the inside of your motor out and it also is supposed to extend the distance between regens um, like I said I have not had a regen uh, since this DPF went it was installed and obviously this kit's only been on here for a couple weeks so the methanol has not been on the truck long enough for me to give you any mile per gallon benefits and I'm not going to pull the intake off to look to see what uh, you know how much of a difference it's made in cleaning uh, because honestly I don't care it's just nice to know that it is doing something as far as cleaning is concerned but um, last thing I want to say is down in here, this pipe right here is what you have to remove to install the EGT. I mean, you have to take it out, drill it, tap it, and then reinstall it. But those two bolts down there, you can't really see it, are infamous for snapping. And I don't want to deal with that, to be quite honest with you. So i am been reluctant to install the pyrometer. I don't see myself doing it in the future. Maybe if I meet a friend who has done this job numerous times and felt confident that he can take care of it and should something go wrong he can still take care of that then I would let him do it but I'm not taking it to the shop I feel like that's money not spent well and I'm sure as hell not going to try it in fear of breaking something um, like I said those bolts are known for snapping and I don't want to risk it so anyways um, that's my video this went way longer than I thought uh, it is a little windy out here so if uh, you didn't hear anything I said or had need any clarification want to tell me how great this video was how horrible it was if you want to see something specific when it comes to the methanol kit don't hesitate to comment uh, feel free to subscribe hit that like button and it really helps me out but anyways I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if there's enough interest I will make another one showing more about it